Home Sweet Home is a Taiwanese first-person horror game that follows a man named Tim waking up in an unfamiliar place, being stalked by the ghostly visage of a dead girl. The game is available on Steam, PlayStation, and Xbox consoles. There you are. Yes. <gasps> what the fuck? Atmosphere. The atmosphere of Home Sweet Home is balanced between the constant stealth and the eerie environments. There's an odd repulsion thanks to the dirt and bloodstains that smear the darkened corridors of empty schools and police stations. But what's more unique is the Taiwanese folklore that's sprinkled throughout the game. Red string tied around doors to keep them closed, and the eerie statues and figures that lurk in the wooden house. <laughs> the game has an electric feeling, like you're being watched and you're not alone in the few moments that you spend away from your pursuer. Though some places are more atmospheric than others, with the wooden house being full of unnerving scripted events and creatures straight from folklore itself lurking just out of reach. The Taiwanese elements aren't played into very hard, but in the areas where they're more prevalent, they're definitely more atmospheric, due to how alien it feels to a western audience, whereas the police station and the school still feel eerily similar. Peppered throughout the game are diary entries that talk more of Taiwanese folklores and rituals people did to accomplish vain and selfish goals that seem to have backfired horribly, and reading these along with the eerie music only amplifies the atmosphere further. But where the atmosphere goes deep into dread is when you're being stalked by the ghost girl, and the maze-like schools and police stations you have to traverse feel endless in design. These two things make the stealth extremely tense and stressful. You're pulled into scenarios over and over that leave you exposed or vulnerable whilst trying to avoid enemies or navigate your way through a plethora of confusing rooms. That's one Harry Mason. Scares. Most of the scares come from the close encounters you'll get whilst dealing with the ghost girl. She never leaves the area, roaming endlessly and putting pressure on you until you escape. Get seen by her and you'll have to run and hide in the nearest locker, or try to defend yourself. Though this is sometimes just a one-hit death if you can't get away. This forces you to spend the vast majority of the game creeping around and solving puzzles until you open the exit, which is where most of the horror is found. The gameplay loop doesn't change a great deal, but it does work consistently, letting the atmosphere and the presence of the girl alone build this paranoia and dread as you try to work around her to get the exit open. The game sets the player up time and time again by luring you into a scenario and then having the girl appear to cause panic. And though some of these scripted sequences are predictable, some of them are actually really well done. Besides this, there are a few jump scares and scripted sequences to spice things up. There's not always rhyme or reason to some of these, which makes the majority of them shatter your concentration, since they're largely unpredictable. Machines coming alive randomly, things falling over, and the like. The scripted sections are surprisingly well done, with a lot of eerie things lurking and moving around to give you the impression that you're not alone. Though the game has the potential to be tiring and frustrating based on your patience with the game's stealth, it's forgiving enough not to feel cheap, but challenging enough to not feel easy, with the game ramping things up as it progresses. The game tries a lot of things that aid the atmosphere to keep the tension high and to freak you out at just the right moment. That's two Harry Masons. Sound design. 
The game's sound effects tie really well into the horror, with the ghost girl having several identifying sounds from this unsettling clicking you can hear at a distance to pinpoint her location, to her whispering things and a ghostly voice when you get close. Her voice sounds strained, and after reading some of the diaries, you can understand why. There's also the music. The exploration music is a high-pitched, shimmering whisper that's barely perceptible, but still leaves this feeling of unease. The stealth music is more of a dirge with a gong that seems to never stop ringing, and a whining, elongated shudder of strings that bends ever up and down. It's unnerving. There's some voice acting with various quality. Tim's voice acting is pretty great with his exclamations being very realistic. Since but people like Do who call human. don't really sound very convincing at all. You seem a bit strange. You don't act like yourself lately. We're 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 friends, aren't we? The general sound effects sometimes loop a lot, which can be tedious and others can be a bit short, like the door opening sound seems cut too early, which is one you hear a lot. Footsteps and other general sound effects are fine, however. The game's directional audio does a great job helping you keep track of the ghost girl's location, which is immensely helpful during the stealth. On the other hand, the game's reverb and ambiance sound stunted in some locations. Though it does differentiate things like wooden corridors from laminated tiles, some areas are alive with the appropriate reverb and storms in the distance, and others are just dead like Tim's house, which is lacking in both. The sound design does very well in some scenarios and stumbles a bit in other, but it's never straight up bad or hurts the immersion. That's three Harry Masons. Gore. The ghost girl emerges from blood splatters on the wall and you can sink into a giant pool of blood at one point too. There's a healthy spray of it in nearly every area and you can't go really very far without seeing it in some capacity. Though it goes deeper and more vile than that with the section featuring the girl throwing up more blood and nails which is just disturbing. Whether the blood is symbolic or not, it really is everywhere, colouring the nightmare in. That's for Harry Masons. Story. The story follows protagonist Tim as he chases after his wife Jane in a series of surreal nightmares. The game was incredibly hard to understand and mostly just felt like a series of surreal nightmares, with the only through line being that you were chasing Jane, which isn't actually too far from the truth. There's a lot of diary entries that explain Jane's feeling of being ignored by her husband and the seemingly paranoid delusions that confronted her, but also some that explain the backstories of the enemies. Things like news reports cut in randomly to explain certain things that are going on, but due to the nature of the way the game's narrative plays out, most of it feels disconnected, and it's hard to see the relation when you're playing it in the moment. Some monsters and events seem to come out of the left field, which is consistent with the concept of a dream, but it also feels too random. The story is okay, but it's difficult to appreciate what it's trying to do. Making the final score 4 out of 5 Harry Masons. Home Sweet Home can be utterly terrifying in certain situations, but for me personally the game got repetitive after a while with the constant stealth wearing me down faster than I would have expected. Though I can't say this would apply to everyone, the game is fairly short. Again I'd like to remind you the whole thing is down to my opinion in horror games and if you don't share this opinion then that's cool, I get it. I'd like to point out that whilst I ended Tim's nightmare, I didn't give up on Jane and advise you don't either. There will be more horror reviews in the pipeline and thanks for watching. Always go check out Bumps in the middle of the night. Peace.